I have heard that some diamonds are cursed. Do we have any of those? Would you be scared if I said yes? Oh, I would be terrified. Well, that's unfortunate because we have some <laughs> cursed gems in front of us. Hello everyone, welcome back to another unboxing. Today we have a guest on the channel. She is one of our producers. This is Sarah. Hello. I've actually known Sarah since middle school. Yep. We went to school together. I've known her a good bit. So when she came to the team, I was like, oh, hey, what's up, girl? <laughs> How's it going? I'm going to show you some really neat stuff that I found in the back. Ooh, surprise. Two boxes. <laughs> One, two, two three. three. <sighs> what is this? So these are replicas of historical diamonds. This box in particular, <laughs> the names are all German. Okay. Most of these are made of quartz, okay. except the colored ones, those are made of glass. This entire case is also made of glass. Okay. Which of these cuts or replicas is your favorite? Ah, oh, yeah. There are a lot of options. Well, I do like symmetry. So we have the Florentine diamond, which in the quartz one is, you know, clear, and then in the glass is like ever so slightly yellow. In this case, the glass replica is more on par because the actual Florentine diamond does have hints of yellow to it because of the nitrogen that's in its chemical composition. I appreciate that on both the table and the pavilion, which is kind of like the top and bottom of mm -hmm. the gemstone, is like exactly symmetrical. So there's not like a flat table at all. It, oh. it kind of comes to a point. It is a double-sided rose cut. I believe it has 126 facets. It's just something a little different. That does seem a little scratchy. The only way you can actually see the diamond is from replicas such as these because it is currently missing. This big, massive diamond in the middle of your box does catch my eye just because it seems like quite a feat. This diamond, as well as the surrounding diamonds, were all part of the same original diamond. Wow. It was quite massive. So the Coolian diamond, if you'd like to hold it, it is, oh, yeah. it is quite large. The total original rough carat weight was, I think, somewhere around 3,100 and Six? Wow. It was found in South Africa in 1905. Oh, that recent. The person who first found it actually mistook it as glass because of how clear it was. Wow. Do you think maybe somebody else could have stumbled upon it and maybe. thought it was glass and just walked on by? I could see that could have happened. It was faceted into the nine large pieces of the Coolian diamonds and then just because there was all of those extra bits mm -hmm. into 96 other smaller diamonds. You're still holding the world's largest diamond. The Coolian first and the second are in the royal crown jewels. The okay. largest diamond that you're currently holding is currently in the scepter, and then Coolian the second is mm -hmm. in the royal crown. Interesting, because I had always thought, you know, if it's in the scepter, it had to have been there for oh, wow. hundreds of years. I imagine if, if you were to find something cool, I would probably make a little bit of changes to be like, check out this piece right here, you know? Yeah. Is there any of these other diamonds that you would want to wear if you were royalty, Sarah? If I were royalty? If you were royalty. See, this Dresden green diamond, I think, is really interesting. Mm -hmm. I really like the green because it's a little unique. You don't see it that often. So the green diamond, especially the Dresden green diamond, gets its color from natural gamma radiation. So is that radioactive? Um, no, it is okay. not radioactive. This took a really long time to create this color from the radiation, but even after then, with all of that time in between. It's good and safe and chill. The Dresden green color is actually known as a fancy green, and it was deemed that by the Gemological Institute of America. The Dresden diamond now is currently set in a brooch and it has 58 facets. The cut of the Dresden green diamond is a pear-shaped facet and it was believed to be found somewhere in India. The Dresden green diamond is currently in the green vault in Dresden, Germany. 
if it were anywhere else, I would. Like if it was it in the wrong. the blue vault. Like, <laughs> what are you doing? How would you wear this, Sarah? So there's only one of them, so I don't think it could be earrings. Feels a bit too big to be a ring. So I think no. the most natural way to wear it would be in a necklace. Would necklace. probably have to be a sturdy chain. I think that would work quite well. Yeah. Let's move on to this other royal looking diamond. diamond. <laughs> this one is called the Regent. It's a very classic cut, I feel like. A cushion shaped brilliant. The Regent Diamond has a lot of intriguing history. So it's been on a journey. It, oh, I would say roller coaster of a journey. Oh, okay. Now, the Regent Diamond was found by a slave in 1701 who hid the original rough of the 410 carat diamond in a wound in his leg. That's a big wound. That is a it... big wound. In return for a safe passage, was given to an English sea captain. But, lo and behold, there was betrayal. The sea captain sold the diamond to an Indian merchant. From then, at that point, bounced around an additional few hands 16 years later, and ended up being bought and purchased by French regent Philip II. So we bought it. Yes. And then I assume that's where it's, it got its name. What did Regent he do diamond. with it? Well, eventually this diamond was put into the royal crown of Louis the 15th and then was also thusly worn by Louis the 16th. And I imagine it was then taken. Yeah. The guillotine. <laughs> the guillotine. <laughs> it was recovered once more and then set in the handle of Napoleon Bonaparte's sword. Okay. But it is now on display for all to see at the Louvre in France. France. That makes sense. Yes. Would you put it in a sword or would you, how would you wear it? I'm actually very much into tiaras slash like circlets. Good choice, good choice. I would somehow incorporate it into that because those are fun. We need to bring them back. You could just like, Right here in the center of the tiara. It definitely a statement like, hello, oh, yeah. here I am. Nice to meet you. Hi, Brittany. I have heard mm. it's said yes. that some diamonds are cursed. Do we have any of those in front of us? Would you be scared if I said yes? Oh, I would be terrified. Well, that's unfortunate because we have some <laughs> cursed gems in front of us. We have the Hope Diamond. Now our Hope Diamonds look different. The Hope, the Hope Diamonds are a little bit different. Glass can be colored sometimes. It usually will take on a lot of pigment. The actual Hope Diamond that you would see today is, is not right. that blue. The Hope Diamond is colored by boron. So I'm looking mm. at these cuts. Yes. They definitely have some differences. The pavilions on both are definitely different. So how the true Hope Diamond is, is technically a rectangular antique brilliant cushion cut, also known as kind of like the old miner's cut. It combines the shape of the cushion cut mm -hmm. and the pattern of the brilliant. Okay, but you said it was cursed. I did say that it was cursed. Whoever is currently in possession of the diamond is said to fall to kind of like an unfortunate fate. Not today, of course, because these are replicas. They're cool. Yeah, but so we will not experience the sweet release of death. No, not today. <laughs> so it was once owned by Mary Antoinette, and we all know what happened there, as well as owned by many additional people who have perished. It's in the Smithsonian now, right? You can't kill a building. We should definitely go to the Smithsonian sometime on a gem adventure. We have another diamond on the board that has more of a cruel, kind of like curse to it. That one would be the Sansi diamond. This is a cool looking diamond. It is a cool looking diamond. It has the symmetrical cuts on both the right. table and the pavilion. Recently I did some research on the Sansi. It was quite revolutionary of a cut at the time. So at least, Three of the previous owners of the Sansi Diamond have meant 
quite gruesome fates. The Santee diamond has also been used as payment to finance wars. One particular tale, when Sansi was sending his servant over to King James I, along the way, the servant was attacked by robbers, and in an attempt to save the diamond so that the robbers wouldn't take it, he swallowed it whole. It's a lot to swallow. But the robber said, okay, so what? And still killed him anyway. And then the diamond was later acquired through his corpse. Hmm. You can go look at it now because it's in the Louvre. So a lot of times for our unboxing videos, we take a closer look, but yes. because we have a lot on the table today, we're gonna to take a closer look at all of the diamonds that we weren't able to talk about today. We wanna to make sure you get a good look at all of them that we have here. Yeah. So let's take a closer look. A great time today. Thank you for sharing this with me. I learned a lot. If you guys would like to learn more or if you want us to cover on these other diamonds we weren't able to talk about, feel free to leave a comment down below. Yeah. We might be able to do a second episode of this. Feel free to like, subscribe, and ring that bell so you don't miss out on future episodes. Thanks for watching.